This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Worship and Fellowship of Delisle Community Chapel on the coldest Sunday of the year. At least I hope it's the coldest Sunday of the year because I don't want it to be any colder than it is today. For those of you who are watching from warmer climes, bless you. And here in central Saskatchewan, the uh, winter is uh, in full tilt and uh, things are mighty, mighty cold. People are having trouble starting vehicles and uh, you don't want to be outside too long unless it's absolutely necessary. And then you've got to wear the right clothing. But here inside the building, we're good and warm and the fellowship is warm. So we're going to relax, enjoy the service, and we're going to worship God and appreciate his presence with us. Let's pray. Father God, we are in your presence now. Thank you that you have promised to meet with your people wherever they gather in your name. We ask God that you would be with us as we are here in the sanctuary and also as we're watching online from our homes. Wherever we are, you are there. You see us, you care for us, you love us. And God, as we sing together, may our songs delight your heart. We love you. We want to love you more. Help us to be better, braver, more beautiful people for the experience that we share with you this morning. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. From now, Psalm 147, 1 to 14. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord built up Jerusalem. He gathered the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in his power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The light de Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. Great. 
joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow in humble adoration And there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art Sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? God sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And then from the letter to the Hebrews, the first chapter and the first three verses, we read, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And from John's Gospel, chapter 14, we read verses 5 through 14. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. 
or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the gospel of our Lord. A six-year-old first grader was busy with his crayons drawing a picture in class. The teacher came by the desk and looked down to see what he was drawing and wasn't quite sure what it was. And she watched for a moment and then she said, what is it that you are drawing there? And the little fellow replied, I'm drawing a picture of God. The teacher said, you can't do that. Nobody knows what God looks like. And the little fellow responded by saying, they will when I'm done. Well, today we will begin to answer the question, who is God, really? What is God? He like. According to a recent poll, 65% of Canadians claim to believe in God. Sadly, that number is declining over the years. In the USA, 87% of the people questioned say that they believe in God, but when questioned further, only 64% are convinced that God actually exists. Even among those who say they believe that God exists, there is a wide divergence of opinion as to what God is really like. If there is a God, it makes sense, doesn't it, to have the most accurate information about him that is available? The best source of information about God is this book, the Bible. Somebody said that Bible, B-I-B-L-E, stands for best information before leaving earth. Why is this book a reliable source book? Because it is not just a collection of people's ideas about God. Rather, it is a book inspired by God himself in which he reveals himself to us. He is a self-revealing God. In the God-breathed writings of the prophets and the apostles, God shows us what he is like. Now, we live in a time when people have a lot of different ideas about God. You talk to some and they'll say, well, I, I think God is like this, or I believe God is like that. I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. If your conception of God is different from what the Bible reveals him to be, then you are only thinking about a false God of your own imagination. The Bible teaches us that God is spirit. And we can't see spirit with our human eyes. But God does want us to know who he is and what he is like. In fact, he created us in his image to have a relationship with him that is real and personal. So he tells us in his word, in the Bible, what he is like. And he reveals what he is like by telling us what he does. I want to take you to these Bible passages that we have heard today, including the psalm that was read for us earlier. And we're going to pick out some truths that show us something of what God is really like. Let's go first of all to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Here we read that God sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. Compared to him, the people on the earth are just like grasshoppers. Well, 
What does this tell us? God rules. He is on the throne. He is the supreme authority. Verses 23 and 24 say, He brings princes to naught. He reduces the rulers of the world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, than he blows on them and they wither. And a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. Think of the great men and women of history who have ruled the nations. Their time is short. And they're gone. God is the supreme authority. He is incomparable. According to verse 25, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. There is no God like Yahweh. He is omnipotent and he is all powerful. Verse 26 tells us that because of his great power and mighty strength, the universe continues to unfold as it should. God not only rules, God creates. He creates. It says in Scripture that he stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent. The very first verse of the Bible tells us that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He put the stars in place. You know, you can pay money now to have a star named after you. Or you can name a star after somebody that you love or somebody that you want to honor. But the fact is, each star already has a name. God has given it a name. And he knows the names of every star. All those billions of stars scattered in the galaxies in our universe. In the beginning, God created, and God is still creating. The wind and the water continue to shape this world. Every time that there is a new life born, God is active in the creation process. We have a creative God. And God has not just created the universe and this world and then turned his back on it to let it run according to its own way. No, he sees what is going on. He sees what is going on in your life. Why do you complain? Why do you say, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. He sees everything. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere all the time. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He has all wisdom. God sees. God knows. And God cares. God cares for you. Even though he created and sustains the entire universe, he cares for you. You. Incredible. God is not limited. Sometimes people have the idea, well, I don't want to bother God with little things. It's not as if he has only a limited capacity. He can deal with the little things as well as the greatest things. And then, as we go on, we find that God renews and God strengthens Listen again to these verses. Isn't this great? He gives strength to the weary. I'll tell you, I find that people are getting very weary during this year and now, yeah, pretty much a full year that we've been dealing with COVID. It, it wears people down. I'm so glad that God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. 
In fact, I observe that when I talk to young people and ask them how they're doing, one of the most common answers that I get is, I'm tired. Hmm. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Some of you have had a, a tough week. Some of you have had to deal with very hard things in recent days. You wonder where you will get the strength to go on from God. That's where, from God. And God inspires. He will soar on wings like eagles. I love that. He gives us enthusiasm for life. The word enthusiasm actually comes from two words, en theos, in God. It means to be filled with God, literally. Now, we, we use that word in other ways. When you uh, watch the Super Bowl this afternoon, somebody will talk about the enthusiasm of the players, the, the inspired game that they played. But really, at the, at the most profound level, inspiration and enthusiasm come from a connection with the God who is bigger than you can possibly know or even imagine. God is the one who brings out the best in us. I want to take you now to the psalm that was read for us at the beginning of the service, Psalm 147, where we find more of the things that God does. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. God builds up. He builds up his people. And he will build you up too. And he gathers his people. He wants his people to gather. It's important that we encourage one another. And God heals. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I was traveling on my motorcycle one time and I remember riding through a city. I don't even remember where it was now, but I saw a huge double billboard, full-size billboard, one on top of the other. The top one was for a, uh, a bar, and the name of the bar was Heartbreakers. Heartbreakers. And the bottom billboard was for a church, and it said, God heals the brokenhearted. I thought that was pretty cool. I did think that was really pretty cool. God does heal the brokenhearted. It says so in his Bible. Well, let's go on. Verse 6 of the psalm says, The Lord sustains the humble that casts the wicked to the ground. The Lord sustains the humble, those who are willing to admit that they need his help. What does it mean to sustain? It means to give endurance to, to make perseverance possible. The power to keep on keeping on comes from the God who created us. And then as we come to verses 8 and 9, we find that God provides he covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. Isn't it great to know that God takes care even of the animals and the birds, provides them with what they need? And as Jesus said, how much more will he not provide for you? Even though we are so often people of small faith. And then God delights. I, I kind of like this. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him. Those who regard him with a 
reverential awe. Those who live with a sense of accountability toward him. We are urged to live our lives in such a way that we will experience the smile of God's pleasure. And it's a two-way street. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Too often, though, we want to delight ourselves in the things that he gives rather than in the Lord himself. And then as we come further along in the psalm, we read, God blesses his people. That's in verse 13 of the psalm. To be blessed means to be made happy. It means to be given an abundance of good things. Verse 14 tells us that he satisfies. I love that. He grants peace and satisfies you. E. Stanley Jones, great missionary to India, said, if you lose everything but Jesus, you find that Jesus is enough. Well, in these two passages that we've looked at, Isaiah 40 and Psalm 147, and we could have chosen many other passages as well, God tells us what he is like. But God didn't stop with just telling us. He showed us. It's a divine show and tell, if you will. God sent his son Jesus to show us exactly what he is like. Who he is, really. In the letter to the Hebrews, we find these words. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. The prophets were those who wrote the scriptures of the Old Testament. But in these last days, it goes on to say, he has spoken to us by his son. That would be Jesus, whom he has appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The Son of God was active in the creation of the universe. And the Son, who is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustains all things by his powerful word. He's the exact representation of God's being. Our Father created the universe through his Son, and through his Son he sustains all things. Everything that is true of God the Father is true of God the Son. So when we talk about the fact that God rules and creates and sees and knows and cares, that God renews and strengthens and inspires, that's true of Jesus. Jesus rules. He creates. He sees. He knows. He cares. He renews. He strengthens and inspires. Jesus builds up his people and heals the brokenhearted. Jesus sustains those who turn to him for help. Jesus provides for our needs and delights in those who follow him in faith and in obedience. Jesus blesses and satisfies his people and gives us his peace. We began today by asking, who is God, really? What is he like? He is like Jesus. God is exactly like Jesus. The disciple Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. John 14, 8. And what was Jesus' response? Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. 
In other words, when you see me, you see exactly what the Father is like. In fact, he said, I and my Father are one. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Wow. Like Father, like Son. That is why Jesus could say with all the authority of the Father, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Come to Jesus, right now, today, this minute, and he will lead you to the Father. Only through Jesus can you come to know God in a way that is real and personal. So come, we pray. Father God, we realize that you are infinite and beyond our understanding. Your ways are past finding out. And yet you have chosen to reveal yourself to us. You show us something of what you are like through the creation that you have made. You give us much more information about what you are like as we read your inspired scriptures. And when we see Jesus, your son, who came to be human so that we could actually experience him and know exactly what the Father is like. That's amazing. That shows us the extent of your love. How desperately you wanted us to be able to come to you and have a relationship with you that is real and personal. Help us today to get to know you better as we read and study your word and your spirit applies it to our individual lives. Thank you that together as your people, we grow in faith and become more and more like Jesus. Help us to share your good news with those who do not yet know your love and your good news. We pray through Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Now we pray. Ruth. Our Father God, I want to thank you so much that uh, as we get into your word, the Bible, we come to understand more of who you are and what you are like. We also understand that we can't fully comprehend you, and we couldn't even begin to know what you are really like if it was not that your Holy Spirit works through your word to reveal Jesus to us. Thank you, Jesus, that you show us exactly what God is like. And thank you that you gave yourself as a sacrifice, shedding your blood on that cross, giving your life in our place so that we could have new life. Thank you, Jesus, that you are alive today. Thank you that on the third day you rose again from the dead. And you ascended to your Father. And you promised to come again. We know that you always keep your promises. We know too that during this time that you are with the Father in heaven, your Spirit is with us here. You sent your Holy Spirit to be with us and even to live within us. May we learn what it is to delight ourselves in you, to find satisfaction in our relationship with Jesus. Help us to love you with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. 
Today, God, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. We find that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You answer our prayers when we call. You provide our needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And so, God, right now, we say, at whatever point we may be in our spiritual journey, Jesus, we come to you. We put ourselves in your hands. We trust you completely. We believe that you will lead us to the Father and to our eternal home. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. smile on you and be kind to you. Yahweh will look on you with favor and give you his peace.